It's episode 19 of the Social Restaurant Podcast. This week we dive into social media customer service. Stay tuned. It's the restaurant industry's most popular show on how social media, mobile, and other disruptive technologies are changing the way your customers think, act, and interact with your restaurants online. Each week, we talk with some of the best and brightest minds in the restaurant business, from owners and operators to chefs, marketers, and their technology partners. Welcome to the Social Restaurant Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another episode of the Social Restaurant Podcast. We're at number 19. And this episode is really interesting to me because this is something that's, that's kind of near and dear to my heart based on some past experiences that I've had. I'll start with a story. When I did some time back at Bob Evans a while back, I'll never forget, I think it was like my third or fourth day on the job. Uh, As the marketing manager for the organization and for the restaurant division, I was in charge of manning the post for social media and that at the time meant our Facebook page, Twitter account, and a few other different, different social media profiles. So first or second or third day on the job, I walk in and I go to the Facebook page and it's you know probably sometime around 9 a.m. in the morning uh, and I look at the Facebook page only to find literally pictures of a dirty toilet that had been bombed all over our entire page. Uh, obviously taken from a, a mobile phone and the, the pictures were fairly good resolution so you could assume that it was from an iPhone. Um, but these literally were just one by one taking up our entire timeline on the Bob Evans page. And so I, I did a little bit of digging and I have came to find out that these pictures had been taken the previous night somewhere around 8 o'clock uh, by a consumer who had been at one of our locations – went into the restroom, complained that the restroom was dirty and didn't really get any any you know attention to that and had all the while been putting things on Twitter and Facebook and so on and so forth. And so finally this this lady and rightly so went into the bathroom and decided to capture all of this on on camera and post it to our Facebook page. Uh, and I spent probably the next three or four hours trying to clean all of this up from responding on the page to you know seeing what we could do about getting the pictures bumped down and and turning that over to our customer service department uh, who then contacted the the lady back by phone and went through the normal process of how you would deal with with disgruntled guests but all of this happened at you know between the hours of eight and nine a.m in the morning so for 12 hours those pictures sat on our page. Likewise, at a, at a time when Facebook was, was pretty hopping, was pretty busy, a lot of people would jump on Facebook and, and mess around during the evenings when they're at home sitting on their couch, maybe with a tablet, maybe with a laptop. Uh, but this was, this was really an eye-opening experience for me in terms of this idea of how do, we, how do we use the web for customer service or as an extension of our customer service department? And I think a lot of brands struggle with this because – Marketing has latched on to social media and that is starting to change. I believe it's starting to change, but historically it's been the marketing agencies, it's been the marketing departments and the marketers to be the ones to first adopt social media as a tool and yet those individuals, while they're very good at crafting campaigns and messages and programs and really marketing the business, aren't necessarily the folks that are trained in customer service and customer experience and how to really deal with guests that are not just looking for a simple you know, shout out, but really looking to get their problem solved. And that is going to be our topic for today. And I'm really excited about the guest that we have on today because as of 2010, he kind of started down this path with his company and he is he and his company are really leading the charge in terms of how do we pick up the telephones but also pick up the Facebook and the Twitter and all of the other social networks out there that essentially have become direct lines of communication for our customers. So we're going to talk about that. But first to frame up the situation, let's let's look at the numbers behind this. So there was an interesting study done uh, by Oracle in 2013. And again, the links will be down to this in the show notes. But what they did is they looked at a lot of different executives and what were their opinions on customer service in general and then also how digital and social all plays into this. One of the staggering stats in this report I think was amazing uh, was that they cite that brands could lose up to 20% of revenue 
from poor customer experiences. And there's a lot of stats going going out there right now that say if a customer does business with your brand, your restaurant, your business – and has a poor experience, it's likely that they'll never come back. And that's really the easy end of the stick. It's likely that they'll never come back. And it's also even more likely that they'll probably tell some friends about that poor customer experience. 93% of the executives that were surveyed believe that Improving this, improving the customer service in their organization is absolutely a top priority in the next two years. And I can imagine a lot of you out there that are listening probably feel the same way. The funny thing is, is that 81% of those executives also believe that that starts, this improvement starts by looking and learning how to deliver great customer experiences on social media or using social media as a part of that customer experience and as a means of communication to listen for those complaints, to respond to customers, and really kind of build this into the customer experience team or department in that organization. But in contrary, 35% of those same executives don't have social media for their sales channels cha- sales channels and 35% also don't have social media implemented in terms of really being a mainstay part of their customer service department reasons for that then are cited as you know obviously a lot of the obstacles that we're already familiar with number 1 is is inflexible technology a lot of these systems don't integrate with other systems and social media cannot live in a vacuum inside the organization and so how does that play into integrating with the point of sale system but then also some of the back end systems that store customer data uh in terms of you know who's gotten what discounts or how many times has this customer complained so really the these systems in order for this to take place in order for this improvement to happen around social customer service, the systems have to talk to each other. They have to be integrated. That actually prevents the the second reason that was cited, and that was siloed information. A lot of departments, and I've experienced this firsthand, a lot of departments don't share information when it comes to social media. In fact, a lot of people are vying for ownership over over you know who controls those channels, who is responsible for that. And yet, If social is supposed to roll throughout the organization and become something that is a direct line for customers to talk to the brand, then those silos need to be taken down. So that was the number two kind of number big reason as to why this is an obstacle for a lot of brands. And then thirdly, it was insufficient investments, simply that brands have not reached the point where they're sinking in enough money into not just the tools and the technology, but also the personnel, the the individuals who are doing this on behalf of their organizations. And then thirdly, the training that goes along with that. Um, I'm always surprised at at just how challenging it can be for a customer service rep to simply put down the handset or the phone and pick up something like Twitter or a Facebook page and essentially do the same thing that they're doing on a voice-to-voice medium but do it online in, in a social medium. Another survey that came out in 2012, so this is a little bit older survey and again I'll put links to this in the show notes as well as some graphics was conducted by Edison Research. Uh, Edison Research, if you're not familiar with them, does a lot of exit polling for pres- presidential uh, communications. They also have a, or I'm sorry, presidential campaigns. They also ha- do a lot of work in terms of, of technology and a variety of other businesses. Really, really good research firm. Uh, shout out to Tom Webster, who's their, their vice president of strategy over there. Um, but this survey really dug into exactly how our restaurant chains using social media and not just chains, but individual locations, single location restaurants, and also what are the consumer behaviors that are starting to trend up in terms of how consumers want to use social media to connect specifically with restaurants. What the study found, uh, and I believe it was with over about 3,000 different respondents that were nationally weighted, so this is pretty good data, is that 3 in 10 social media users do follow restaurant chains, and 71% of those consumers, those guests, do so uh, to stay in the know regarding deals, coupons, and other discounts. The same is true for individual locations, for single locations, at about 68% of consumers really following their favorite local restaurants to try to figure out where they can get deals. Nearly one in four social media users 
have used social media for customer service. So about 25, 26% of, of individuals who are, are using social media today have at one point tweeted to a brand or hit a brand's Facebook page or, or any other medium to try to get somebody to help them solve an issue. Roughly 81% of consumers who have reached out to those companies, so 81% of that 25%, if you want to do the math on that, uh, have actually received a response. So that's that's good thing. We're moving in the direction. In terms of, of when that response was received is yet to be debated, but we are moving in the direction of, of really building in this idea of social media customer service in our organizations. 30%, 32% of consumers who contact companies uh, for customer support on social media actually expect a response within 30 minutes or less. And I'm going to say that again. 32% of those consumers contacting companies for customer support on social media expect a response within 30 minutes or less. And that is really, really staggering uh, because that's a long time, frankly. On the phone, think about – put this in perspective. If I call your restaurant or your brand and I wait on the phone, if I wait on hold for 30 minutes for customer service, what happens? At the end of the day, I'm probably fuming. As a consumer, there's no way that I am waiting on hold for 30 minutes and yet – we we it's okay or at least as of 2012 expectations were that 30 minutes or less is is what consumers want in terms of a brand responding to their customer complaint but on the phone we would we would cut that down to a fraction of the time 50 57 uh, percent also expect a response during weekend and evening hours. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges for restaurant companies because evening and weekend hours are typically a the, the, the busiest time for operators and a lot of the corporate folks go home. These are nine to five jobs. Uh, and I think too, a, a side product of this is that if you are a community manager in a, in a brand or you're a marketing manager who's responsible for handling social media, uh, or even if you're a customer service rep responsible for handling social media, you don't want to be doing your job 24-7. You don't want to work all day for your 9 to 5 and then go home in the evening and spend your time responding to guests. And because of that, we see a lot of turnover. We see a lot of burnout start to happen. And it begs to differ, you know, how do you really cover the off hours in terms of social media customer service? This is going to be our topic for today, and I'm very excited about the guest that we have in store for you. So more on that right after a word from our sponsors. It's Friday night, and I hope your restaurant sounds something like this. You know when your house is that busy, you don't have time to deal with paper logbooks or employee scheduling. That's why there's ShiftNote, a web-based manager's logbook and employee scheduling tool that can replace those messy paper files with an easy-to-use online system. Learn more and sign up for a free demo at shiftnote.com. Shiftnote.com. Welcome back to the Social Restaurant Podcast. I am your host, Nate Riggs. And this week we have a really interesting guest because I think this is a topic that a lot of restaurant brands, in particular chain restaurant brands, really struggle with. And that is the idea of how does social media play into our customer experience and our customer service department as a channel? So without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest today, Mr. Joshua March, who is the founder and CEO of Converse Social, a firm that has a technology platform that helps a lot of brands with that exact problem. Welcome to the show, Josh. Hi, Nate. Thanks for having me. So I, I appreciate you you being a guest because I think this is a really hot topic today. Your company, Converse Social, you guys have been around since 2009. What really started you down this path in terms of looking at social media from a, a customer experience perspective? Sure. So previous to Converse Social, I had founded a company called iPlatform that was one of the first ever uh, companies building Facebook applications. We were building promotions and marketing campaigns for, Facebook, for, for brands on Facebook uh, since back in 2007. Um, and although that was great and, and we, we, you know, we were one of the first ever preferred developers for Facebook in the world, we grew very quickly, um, I, I was always looking for, so I, I always believed it could have been a little bit of a fad and I was really searching for, for what did I think was 
uh, something that was really fundamental to how companies do business and that was linked to a trend that, was, that wasn't just going to go away, that was something to do with a major shift in how people, you know, in how people did business. Um, and one thing that I really believed and really saw was that there was this massive trend in just how people were communicating, that the communication online was shifting away from uh, private, you know, anonymous, one-to-one -one channels, you know, generally off a desktop computer like email or corporate websites, and it was moving into places which were much more real-time, were public, linked to real identities, uh, you know, off a smartphone in someone's pocket, um, and, and social media was kind of the epitome of these changes. You know, Facebook and Twitter, but it, but it was something that was, was bigger than, than just those platforms and was really something that was a, a major shift that, that even now is still relatively early on. Um, and I believe that that shift was something that was fundamentally going to change how companies had to manage the communication with their customers. Um, and so it was belief in that vision that led me at the end of 2009 to uh, set up Converse Social. And we you know, started investing the money we were making from the agency business to, to, to building a product uh, to really help companies communicate via social media. Um, and you know, we launched in uh, toward July 2010, the kind of first public version, and started to get paying customers. Um, and it was over the next six months or so that we realized that there was this massive challenge around customer service that lots of our customers were having, and that the biggest value we were offering as a product um, was in helping companies really, really deliver proper customer service through social media. Um, you know, at that time, I started spending a, a, a lot of time with customer service departments, with, with customer service agents of, of our customers, really understanding their needs. Um, and I realized that, you know, first of all, not only was you know, there's this growing trend of, of people consumers using social media as a real customer service channel. And when I say real customer service channel, I mean not just someone saying, you know, I hate Wendy's, yeah. but tweeting at Wendy's or writing on their Facebook page with an actual problem, an actual issue that they wanted resolved. The kind of thing that people would have emailed or phoned about, um, you know, speak to someone in person, was now happening in real time in social media. And I realized that the way that most companies were managing social media which is you're know, having one or two marketing people um, doing not just the marketing and the outbound bits, but also responding to people, didn't really work when it came to these real customer service issues. You know, they needed uh, the scale of customer service teams, and they needed real customer service agents who could actually resolve these issues and actually help customers. And that was the only way that you could deliver a proper customer experience. And so you know, with that you know, joint joint aspect of that really believing this was going to only get bigger and bigger, um, seeing that the current way, the status quo, that you know, people, how companies are managing it wouldn't work for this, uh, I realized that there was this big opportunity, not just to build the software that would help companies do this in the best way, but also to really help educate the market on why it was important um, and you know, develop the skills and expertise to be able to help companies actually, actually set up social customer service operations in terms of you know, training their agents in social media, uh, setting up the right processes, uh, and, and everything related to doing this in the best possible way. So that's a very interesting point that you bring up, is that a lot of companies, whether they're restaurants or, or other brands, really struggle with this idea of where does social media live within the organization? Is it a marketing function? Is it a customer experience function? Is it both? And then from, a, from an organizational standpoint, how does that you know, work out in terms of taking down silos of information? From your experience, what, what does that look like on the inside? When you go into a company and you're implementing the software, what are the types of challenges and conversations that you're having internally to help companies make that decision? Yeah, and you, know, you really hit the nail on the head there. You know, most companies are still confused about this. They're unsure. Um, social, for most companies, started very much as a marketing activity. Um, but it's quickly become apparent that it's not just marketing. You know, it's, it's consumer research, it's insight, it's customer service, it's sales. Um, and you know, a lot of companies have either had marketing end up owning that, or kind of you know, ending up with this kind of hybrid department. Um, and I think you've got to look to the future and say, well, you know, five years time, the social becomes completely ubiquitous. Yeah, ubiquitous. Um, 
is there a social department? You know, do you have a single team who are handling everything to do with marketing, sales, customer service, insight, just with regards to social? Or does social just become a fully integrated part of all the relevant bits of the business? And for me, the answer is very clear, which is social needs to be a completely integrated part of the rest of the business. Um, you wouldn't have an internet department. You wouldn't have an email department. You know, the, the relevant the email is an is a integrated part of how you do marketing. You might have email specialists on your team. You might have specialist email software, but it's, it's an integrated part of how you do, do your marketing. And it's also a very important part of how you do your customer service. But you, know, that's, you need different software for that. You need different teams for that, different expertise for that. Um, it might be an important part of how you do consumer research, consumer research or offers or other things, but it's, you know, it, it's integrated fully into the part of the business that uses it. Um, and, and social is the same. You, know, you can't have a social department that's, that's disconnected from the rest of the business. Social needs to be fully integrated into all the different bits of the business that need to use it in the way that, in the way that they need to use it. Uh, and obviously, you do need to ensure those those people are communicating with each other and the technology is talking to each other. Um, but trying to have an all-in-one social team and an all-in-one social software um, it just just doesn't scale up to where businesses need it to be. You know, it's it's interesting. My father-in-law has told me a story when he first started his career. He worked in an architectural firm. And that was back when there was one phone in the office that everybody in that department had to share. And so the phone sat in the middle of the room and there were funny stories about people stretching the cord all the way across the office to take calls. But if you look at that scenario, it, it, social media in organizations is very much kind of in that same boat right now. We've, we've now crossed the point where a lot of brands are, are bringing on um, social media community managers. And again, it's, it's you know isolated to one department. And then you have some brands that are really taking this approach of social business design and rolling it out through the organization. For restaurant companies, what are the big challenges that they're going to face from a technology perspective when you consider that there's multiple locations and a lot of those frontline employees, while they carry around mobile devices, may or may not be connected to the systems that the restaurant's using for social media? Yeah, I mean, you do have this real challenge. And it's a similar challenge to um, you know, bricks and mortar retailers, um, which is how do you get, you know, do you have a central team managing everything, or do you have uh, local people uh, you know, in, in store, local store managers, are you in charge of it? Um, it sounds great if you can, you know, in principle, to have it all managed at a local level. Um, in practice, it's extremely difficult to make that work. You know, your, your local restaurant manager or your store manager is uh, extremely busy, has a, a lot of stuff that's going on. Um, the volume of social just for that one local store might be quite small, and so it's always going to be an afterthought. Um, you know, training them to maintain a consistent brand voice uh, you want to perceive when they're doing public tweets can be very difficult. Uh, for consumers, um, you know, when they... They go into Wendy's they, and they have an issue. They, they just tweet at Wendy's. They probably don't realize there might be a local Twitter handle or everything else, so how do you work that out? Um, and so there's a lot of challenges to try and have it managed at a local level. Um, and generally, the model that we've seen works best is, is having you know, a central team of agents trained in social media who have the direct connections to local stores. You know, they can pick up the phone to a restaurant manager and, and make changes or, or get help or, or make a difference, uh, and who are able to, to respond and handle things in pretty much real time and to ensure the brand of tone of voice and everything is handled correctly. Um, that, that's the model that we've seen uh, work most effectively in practice uh, across our different clients. And, you know, we have clients ranging from you know, many large brick-and-mortar Retailers down to restaurants. You know, in the UK, people like McDonald's, Nando's, uh, a lot of coffee chains use us, and and that central model seems to be uh, the one that works the best. Um, now, some of the challenges, some of the challenges around that are for restaurants, especially. Uh, you know, what are the kinds of problems people are going to be tweeting about, and, and how can you really help them in the best possible way? Um, and I think one of the key things there is around time and real time. You know, if someone's emailing you. It's likely to be an issue. You know, people expect that they can. They might. It might take a day or two to get a response. 
it's often going to be an issue that you can wait a couple of days to respond to. Um, in, in Twitter, if someone's really upset and they're tweeting, then if you don't, if you take a couple of days to respond, they might tweet again. They can get more upset. It's also completely public, so there's a significantly higher chance of other people viewing that, picking it up, retweeting it. You know, it could become a much bigger issue, and the longer you leave it, the worse it can become. Um, sometimes there are also very specific issues. Uh, we did a report um, just uh, which released a few weeks ago, available on our website called Tweet, Email, or Call. You can download it for free, where we looked at different industries and different different companies and whether they were actually resolving customer service issues within Twitter or were they you know, telling customers to, to contact, contact them on traditional channels like email and phone. Um, and you know, restaurants, on average, were deflecting uh, a lot more customer service tweets than, than some of the other brands we looked at. Um, you know, on average, I think it was about 20%. Contrast that with Verizon, who uh, only deflect, I think, under, something like 0.8% or 0.2%, but a very, very small percentage. You know, they actually resolve all the questions and complaints they get via social media. Of course, if Verizon can do it, you think a, a restaurant can do it. Um, and, and what that points towards is that a, a restaurant, you know, most restaurants are still using social more as a marketing tool and haven't yet got real customer service reps uh, using it. But we actually looked at the types of tweets that, that restaurants were getting as well, um, and we found that 16% of the customer service-related tweets that they were getting were actually sent from within a restaurant. The so someone was actually sitting down eating or in the process of ordering or at some point in the lifestyle, where life, in the customer journey when they're still in the restaurant and they're tweeting about a problem. That's um, fascinating. Yeah, and that's actually, it's pretty amazing, right? 60%. Yeah. And it's a pretty amazing, and it's the kind of thing that you would never have got an email about before. But it's so easy, it's so convenient to just pull that iPhone out of your pocket and tweet quickly at the company. You don't have to look up an email address, it's not this long-winded thing, it's like, you know, it's like sending a text message. Um, and it's public, so yeah, other people are going to know. It vents your frustration. You know, it makes them more likely to respond. But that, that's, you know, if you leave that, then you know, you're potentially missing out on this huge opportunity to, to turn a situation around. Because what we found and what, our, what we see with our customers is that when you do respond quickly to those kind of situations and you do resolve someone's issue or you get on the phone to the store manager and you, you're the restaurant manager and you, you, you get them to fix something or you help them out, then people are so you know, surprised and delighted that they can become you know, massive advocates for you. Um, and you know, American Express do this big customer service survey uh, every year called the um, I think customer service barometer, global customer service barometer. Uh, last year, they, uh, this year, sorry, they included social media for the first time, and they did a lot of you know, surveys and consumer research, and they found that the type of people who complain on social media are your most vocal, like in every way. And if they've had a bad experience, they'll tell the most people. Something like 50 people, 50 people on average compared to 13 to the average consumer. But also, if they have a positive experience, they'll also tell a, a massive amount of people. And so, the type of people who are tweeting about problems they've got, if you can show them a great experience and help them out quickly, they're going to tell the world about that. And that's an amazing opportunity from a brand point of view, and also just from a, on that individual customer level. You never before have you had the opportunity to find the customers who are having a bad experience and fix it straight away. You know, that customer would have sit silently and maybe just you know, never come to the restaurant again, um, and probably told all their friends. But, but now you have a chance to actually fix that and, and deliver a great experience publicly. Uh, which is extremely powerful. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think that's one of the most powerful things that powerful opportunities that that restaurants and and all kinds of different brands have is really being able to identify that customer in real time and not only just respond but fix the problem and then, like you said, turn that person into a brand advocate. Let's let's size up this opportunity for a second. So one of the studies that I mentioned in, in the first segment uh, was conducted by Edison Research, The Social Habit. And in that, that 2012 survey, roughly 81% of respondents who are consumers have reached out to companies on social media to try to interact to get some type of customer service. On your site, you actually state that 81% of Twitter users expect same-day response and 29% of Facebook users expect response within two hours. 
I also know that there's some other uh, research out there that say in general, 32% of consumers complaining on social media expect a response within 30 minutes. So frame this up for a second. How – obviously time to response is important, but what does that take from the back end, from, from the time that someone sitting in your restaurant sends a tweet, whether they're delighted or they, they have an issue – what does the back end of that look like from an organizational perspective in terms of being able to deliver on that under 30-minute 30, 30 response sure. time? The most 